Hello, how y'all doing today? My name is Bernie Thompson, and today we're here to take a look at this 2011 Chrysler 300C. This 300 has a 5.7 V8 engine and it's exhibiting a misfire. So the first thing I want to do is get a scan tool and get some basic data from the engine control module on what this misfire might be. So let's go ahead and get that scan tool connected. We've got the scan tool data up. Let's take a look at this. So right away, we have good control and we're centered on bank two, but bank one doesn't have a center point, but we do have switching. The fuel trims, both long term and total trim, and total trim is short plus long, they're good. Bank to bank trims are also really good. Um, the engine is fully warmed up and we have good vacuum voltage is good. Now I have 2DD C set and we also have four monitors that haven't been run. But we already know that the shop has been working on this car and they've already swapped coils and swapped injectors and done all that to try to find the problem. Um, so let's go ahead and look at the DTC. And here we have cylinder number five detected a misfire and we also have an ignition coil on E. So that makes me think that maybe we have something wrong with the ignition coil um, because those are on five. So that makes sense. The next thing I want to do is I want to come over to mode six. And we want to go ahead and we want to pick Chrysler. And I want to run the mode six data just so we can see what's over here. I want to look at the misfire counts and see if any of the other cylinders are missing or it only thinks five is missing. Um, so here, five is missing and it's the only one. All the rest of them are zeros, but it definitely shows five is missing. Now I can feel like a real light roughness to this engine. It doesn't feel like it's misfiring, but it feels a little like it's a little rough. Um, but obviously it's been missing. Now the shop says you can feel this car really misfire when you get it under a load, but I can feel something going on right now, a roughness, so I don't think I need to drive this car because I have a problem right now. I also am never hitting my control. I'm having a control problem on bank one, and five is on bank one. So since this has ignition codes or ignition coil codes along with this misfire, I want to go ahead and I want to get a scope set up on the ignition coils so we can look at all the ignition coils at the same time and try to figure out if I have a bad coil or I've got a, a fuel problem, the injector, I got a mechanical problem. Uh, ignition waveforms can tell you a tremendous sum of what's going on inside the cylinder. So let's go ahead and get that ignition analyzer set up. On this vehicle the battery is in the trunk so I always want to go to the negative and connect the scope negative to the negative post at the battery. This will give me proper testing. Okay I've gone ahead and attached the oscilloscope to this 5.7. I've connected channel 1 to cylinder 1, channel 2 to cylinder 2, channel 3 to cylinder 3 and so forth. Each channel is connected to the same numbering on the engine cylinder system. That'll make it easy for us to interpret the data once we've got it up on the scope. So let's go ahead and get the scope set up now. Now that we've connected the scope to this engine, I need to make sure that all of the leads are connected and they're actually making a good connection to the wire. To do that, I'm going to go into the meter screen. And when I come to meter, I can see I have voltage on all of these and all these lights are out. If one of these doesn't have a good connection, the light is red. And that will tell me that I have an open circuit and I need to come re-back probe it. Now this is really helpful because when I first connect to an engine, I don't know which ones I'm connected good and bad on and I also don't know if I have an open circuit. Since the code is for cylinder 5, maybe we've got a problem on that and that's this white one. Now what I want to go ahead now is I want to start the scope and now I want to go ahead and get in the car and I want to power brake it. I want to do a power brake so I can load the ignition system so I can see if I have anything failing. Now that 
that we've captured our data, let's go ahead and take a look at some of these ignition waveforms. We want to get the zoom window, and then we want to come in and we want to just take a look at what's here. So we want to zoom in a little bit. So these are ignition fires, and right away, one has something going on. One's not, not as big as the others. It's like it doesn't have maybe air in it. Do you see how the green one comes up and it shows lean, and this shows lean, and I got a lot of turbulence? And the same with the orange, and the red, and the yellow, and this one doesn't do that? Let me zoom in a little bit more so I can give you a better idea of what I'm seeing. Do you see how this has more uprising? Do you see how this is sort of flat across? Do you see how I got a big kick here? This guy, this, that's number, that's five, so that's got some issue. So I got a lot of turbulence. That shows I got air during that power break. I was letting air in there. And do you see how it's just sort of flat? Five is the problem. I don't think five has got enough air going into it. That's, that should have more turbulence. When you're power braking or you snap it, you should have air turbulence. If you're at idle, you shouldn't have any turbulence. So if we go back to an idle state, we probably won't see that because we're not letting more air in. Let's just check. See here, they all look normal during an idle phase. But during the power break, I have a problem. When I'm letting more air in, I should get turbulence. When they're idling, you shouldn't have much turbulence. It should be a pretty smooth, even waveform. So that makes me think that I have a problem with number five, and I, I don't think this is fuel related. I think this is a mechanical failure. There's just no air getting in that cylinder. That's what the ignition waveform would suggest to me. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and I want to get a pressure transducer in the exhaust, and I want one on the intake, and I want to do a quick cranking test on this. We're going to use a tailpipe pressure sensor that goes into the tailpipe. I want to just use a straight hose so when we crank this engine, we have a better waveform from the exhaust system. Channel 1 is connected to the tailpipe sensor. Channel 2 is connected to the ignition coil for number 5. Now this has a double plugged ignition coil, so I don't want it firing and damaging anything from the high energy. So I'm going to use a decade box. I'm just going to put wires here that go to a decade box. I'm going to switch 1K of resistance in. Then when this pulls down, like wood fire the plug, I'll still have a trigger so I can see where my ignition vent happened. Channel 3 is connected to the in-cylinder pressure transducer. We're using a 300-pound pressure transducer. Channel 4 is connected to the intake manifold, and we're using a minus 30 pressure transducer to read that with. Now is what we need to do is get the oscilloscope set up for these sensors. Let's go ahead and set the scope up for the pressure transducers that we've put in. So the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to make this less complicated. We're just going to go to a four-channel scope. Channel 1 has a 25-inch tailpipe sensor in it. Channel 3 has a 300-pound pressure transducer in it. Channel 4 has a 30-pound pressure transducer in it. Now we want to just zero these. Now is what we want to do is we want to go ahead and we're going to start getting some data here and this will give me the data that we need. The first test I'm going to do is I want to do a cranking test on this. So the easiest way on this car is I'm just going to disconnect all the coils and then we're going to do a long crank. Now that we have the data, let's go ahead and take a look at this data. 
the first thing I can see is the first cranking pulse produced about 115 pounds, which seems a little low. The engine starts to turn pretty rapidly with the crank, and I start to pull into a vacuum. And I can see that I'm in a vacuum down here due to the intake pulse. So let's go ahead and look at the in-cylinder waveform first. So this is my waveform. I want to go ahead and I want to get the cursors. And we're going to mark this waveform out. So now I want to mark CAM. Now I already see a problem. Okay, first off, if I look at the cam timing, my pocket right down here is before 60. This is just a little early, but that's not my problem. My problem is right over here. Do you see how I have a rounding here? And during the intake pull, it went lower here. This is due to the valve closing 30 degrees early. This valve shouldn't close till over here at about 45 or 50. So this is closing over 60 degrees too early from here to here. So if I close the valve early and the piston is still moving down, it pulls more negative pressure right here. And if I pull more negative pressure, it's because the valve is closed. This valve, it opened late and closed early. That's an indication that I have a flat lifter. So if I have a flat lifter, the, the cam lobe doesn't open the valve at the right time. Now the next thing I want to show you is up here in this area right here. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and I want to zoom in on this. So let's get my zoom window. Now these are my exhaust pushes and this is my intake pulls. So first I want to mark my exhaust pushes and I want the firing order selected 18436572 so that's right. So now I've put the firing order up here and we can see that number 5 this is my push from 5. Now we can see that all these pushes are pretty even and I really don't see a problem in the exhaust. But what I do see is I have a problem on the intake. So what I want to do is I want to further zoom in on the intake right here. And what I want to do now is I want to remark this so we can see the firing order. Let's change that to intake so we mark it correctly. Now this is five right here, so this is the pull from five. Now do you see how I pulled up and the valve opened? And as soon as the valve opened, I have a sharp decrease in pressure within the induction system. I pull up and I open the valve and again I have a sharp decrease in pressure. Higher is more vacuum, lower is less vacuum. I pull up into a higher vacuum, it opens and I have an immediate abrupt change of pressure. Now notice how I pull up and when 5's valve should open right at the pink mark, it should open and drop, it does not. That valve does not open until way over here. So the valve is opening very late. If you notice, each one of these is dropping right before the pink mark. This is dropping quite a bit after the pink mark, showing that the valve opening is late. Now it finally pulls down, but notice where it pulls down is way past the pink mark. Do you see how these are pulling down right next to the pink mark? But this one is pulling down over in the middle of the cylinder box. This is an indication that the valve was not open properly. And again, this has this is showing you that the cam lobe has gone flat. This engine, the cam lobe is flat. On a lot of these engines, the lifters turn and they're rollers and it starts to wear out the cam lobe. So one way or another, the cam lobe is what the problem is with this engine. Um, this is clearly indicating that along with the in-cylinder pressure uh, waveform. So we use all these waveforms together and we overlay them and it makes it much easier to do this kind of work. So you can be sure that what you're calling out is right. To put a cam in this engine is going to be a lot of time and money. So we want to be right, but this lifter has a problem, and it's on cylinder five. And we could see that we had a diminished airflow into the cylinder with the ignition. That was one of our tests. Then we went and we put the pressure sensor on this engine, and we did a cranking test, which clearly shows me that the cam is flat on this engine. 
This is really a pretty quick, easy diagnosis once you understand pressure analysis. If you guys follow a real logical plan to where it's based on testing data and that data drives the next test, and you have quality equipment with a little understanding of pressure analysis, you too will be very successful in troubleshooting in your base.